back to my channel my name is amazing joy Falomo. if this is your first time coming here you're welcome as always welcome to my returning subscribers thank you for your love for your support do well to subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed so guys by the title of my video you already know what i'm going to be talking about today today i'm going to be sharing with you my best story my delivery story of my place charming it's somewhere here okay i don't want to put his face on camera because it's going to make me lose focus okay so okay so last year middle last year i was expecting my baby i was giving like about how many edds i had like four to five edds so i didn't know which exactly to expect and everything so one day my husband was like pack your bags and get prepared you're going to give birth next week when you see and i'm like how do you know that because the doctors kept giving kept giving me dates and um i was like if the doctor cannot give me a specific date or when i'm going to give birth or put to bed is it yours that i'm supposed to believe so i packed my bag anyways i went to my parents place the reason is because the present the proximity of my parents house to the hospital is about seven minutes drive and then um, compared to my house you know coming from my own house to the hospital is about um, one hour 30 minutes so that's if there's um, no traffic anyways so I went to my parents' house. I was there through the week. My husband kept telling me I was going to give birth the next Wednesday. And before I even left the house, I had to do a photo shoot. So that means I did my photo shoot um, exactly a week before I put to bed. Yeah, no, four days before I put to bed. Four, four or five, five days before I put to bed. Five days because that photo shoot was on friday was on a friday and i gave it on wednesday on the next wednesday so that tuesday morning of the week i gave birth i woke up that morning and i was what was in my mind after praying was i was going to call my husband and laugh at him and just mock him because he said i was going to give birth that day i was like to be woken up this morning and I'm not feeling any sign of labor or stuff like that. So I, my intention was basically to call him and mock him. So, um, what did I do? I wanted to die in it that morning. I stood up from the bed. I felt water trickling down my legs. Jeez. And so I felt maybe I had peed on myself because as a pregnant woman, when you're close to your delivery, there's a high chance that you will not be able to go urine for long. So um, sometimes your urine might just run out, you know. It's different for different people, but at that time, me, yeah, I was always urinating. I used to urinate like every every 10 minutes. Like, I, as soon as I take water shower, I will just start feeling pressed. I used to urinate very often. So when I felt that water, I just checked it. It was funny to me because I'm like, what's happening? Like, did I just feed on myself? So I checked very well. I used my phone touch. I checked. I thought maybe I urinated. But just when I was about to switch off, turn off my the phone touch, I saw some. I saw a little patch of blood on my leg. And then I told my mom. My mom was praying for work, so I explained everything. That she was like, she was just screamed. They're like. You are about to have a baby. Pack your bag and be going to the hospital. A lot of that. So <laughs> I quickly went in to my room. My not my room. My former room in my father's house. I packed my bags. I packed my clothes. My hospital bag. My baby bag. My delivery bag. And then I left. I'm getting to the hospital. I was um, told to wait for a bit. And then. Um, uh, I told him I was there for labor, um, I started experiencing labor signs, so they told me to wait for a bit to meet, to meet, um, I thought I had to move in. So they told me to wait for a bit to see the chief nurse, which is like a midwife. So later on, the midwife came and I was taken to the theater. While we were there, they prepared me, they told me to lie down on the, the bed. 
uh, the I what they call it. They also be to lie down on the bed shall in the theater. So I I climbed on it. Before I knew it, she told me she was going to insert her hand inside of me and you know check do cervical examination. My dear, nothing prepares you for that pain. I don't know. Right up until that time, I've never heard of anything like that. And I don't know if people deliberately avoid it or maybe the trauma is too much for people to talk about. But that thing is damn painful. So painful. So she started her hand, she started the cervical examination, she checked. I was screaming on top of my voice. Anybody passing by that door at that moment will think that I was actually giving birth. Like I was doing the normal delivery, I was pushing, but no, I wasn't doing that. It was just a weaker examination. I wanted to run mad. When she was done, I started crying. I was crying so much. I was crying so much. When she was done, she told me to pad off. I used the mother care, I mean, yeah, mother care part, something like that. So I used it. That moment, I noticed that my water started coming out so much, like I was soaking, I was soaking a pad in with water in in less than ten minutes. Like I was, I was changing in less than thirty minutes. I was changing, I was changing. So that was like around after eight. Then around like to a level, the um, CMD, I'm busy. The CMD came and was checking me, called me to the uh, theater to check again. So I went to the theater, it checked. That one was more, even more. I thought maybe the first pain I felt was the highest pain I've ever felt in my life. But when this man did the cervical examination, I wanted to go mad. That pain topped the first pain. After that, I started crying. That was when the reality dawned on me because even before that time, I was just laughing. Everything was like a joke to me. I was just laughing. I was like, what's happening? Is this how the silly boy is so happy? All this thing is so really easy. At that moment, after that um, cervical examination, reality dawned on me that it was not a joke and this is not in any way funny. I started feeling the pains, I started crying, I was like, God, oh, please let me become dilated. And at the time that this doctor checked, I was about almost 14 dilated. You can imagine, around almost 12, I was forced, almost 14 dilated. Like, so I started to like cry, I was crying, I was just, you know, I was worried, I was hungry, a, a lot of things were just happening to me, Sha. So the, I went back to the ward, I was still under observation, they were coming to check, check, I think every 30 minutes they were coming to check on me and the baby, to lose, um, there's this machine they use, they place it on my stomach, to get the heartbeat of the baby, just check my vat they check my vitals, my blood pressure and all of that. They were checking all of those. Um I think every 30 minutes. So eventually around like two around like um, two or so there about the doctor the nurse came to check my vitals and my heart and and she noticed that the baby's heart beat had increased so she took the report to the doctor the doctor came checked himself and he told me that he's going to have to wheel me to the theater for a cesarean section so he asked of my husband my husband was outside the uh, the reception he was waiting sure so they met my husband my husband gave his approval immediately i was wheeled into the theater the, while I was in the theater, <laughs> that's another face. I started to cry. I was crying. I was really crying. I was like, God, this was not what my plan. This was not what I discussed with you. I didn't want this kind of birth. I don't want to give birth to CS. I was crying. I was crying. I was like, 
the, the chief nurse was telling me, Joy, don't worry, the people will come out, you'll be fine. And it's going to be very fast, don't worry, relax your mind, everything is going to be fine. Every, in fact, as she was saying those words, it was even making me cry in the mood. So I, I was already on the bed, and they were about to start injecting me when um, they told me to bring out, um, give them the clothes my baby is going to wear. It's fresh clothes, like uh, the clothes they are going to dress in me. So I had to come down from the bed, go there, uh, select the clothes from my bag, and place them on another set of people. So there was a nurse beside me, I quickly turned to I was crying. I was like, how long is this whole process going to take? And she was like, don't worry, it's not going to take up to an hour. We even did, um, um, someone did um, CS yesterday. It was fast, it's always very fast, so don't worry, everything is fine. Everything will be fine. I was like, I should like, don't worry, don't worry, you will see now. Okay? Stop crying. When you see your baby now, you forget all this pain. <laughs> that gave me a kind of relief. So I just knew that I had to. My baby, my baby was kind of in danger, and um, I had to like compose myself so that everything can be okay for him inside so i relaxed myself i went back to the bed they gave me all the injection they injected me on my back i think my spine or something like that they just they gave me about five injections or more i can't count i can't remember but it was around five or more so they gave me they just told me to sit straight and cross my hand like this straight and then they injected my back so after the injection I was told to lie down. They, they, I think they injected me again somewhere around my, my lap or my stomach. I can't remember. So I started feeling numb. So I, I guess that was anesthesia given to me. I started feeling numb, but I was not feeling pain. And they were tapping me and they asked me if I was feeling anything. I told them I didn't feel anything. That was when they commenced the operation. They started the cuts. They uh, started to, you know, open me up and then you know they saw the baby my my my, um, my baby sack was intact and um, the doctor you know told one of the the other doctor told the other doctor that was okay with him to like pull she was like i can't pull i'm trying my best and she was like she was not really fully well so it was like try and pull let's get the baby out we have to pull so she pulled eventually and um one doctor was coming in one doctor entered the theater when he said to was like if he was the one he would have just made a larger incision instead of wasting time that time wasting to pull and pull and pull and in my mind i was already binding and casting and binding and casting while i was there i started praying i was telling god oh please i want my, my delivery to be smooth i started saying the things our pastor used to say in church my delivery is safe my delivery is smooth my delivery is sound in the mighty name of Jesus. Those are the words I kept repeating. I kept repeating, 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 repeating till eventually they brought out my baby. My when they brought out my baby, the doctor was like, eh? See this baby, you wouldn't have been able to push this baby. This baby is big. My baby weighs 3.55 kg. So they broke the sack, they brought him out. That's when I started so small crying. I was, I was really happy in my mind. I was like, oh God, you gave me a baby that can't cry well. I'm so happy he's not going to cry and disturb me. <laughs> so I was just very happy. The moment I, I heard my baby cry, I started thanking God. I was saying, God, thank you. God, thank you. I'm very sure the nurses would have been wondering what I was saying because my mouth was moving all through the surgery. The, the things I, I was saying was just, my delivery is going to be seen, it's smooth. The sound, they say the smooth, the sound in Jesus' name. The same. And then when the baby came out, I started saying, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, they actually, you know, um, showed me up and, you know, they wheeled me to the theater. So, like, um, later on, my baby, they noticed um, my baby kind of had a, what's it called, jaundice, and we had to stay in the hospital for a bit and everything. But aside that, everything was just smooth, everything was just great. 
to think that I had to like wipe the memory of that day off my head was just for the fact that I wanted to recover well. I didn't want to feel bad for anything. A lot of things happened that day, but um, I'm I'm one person that like to focus on the positive sides of things. I didn't want to feel any form of negativity. I didn't want to feel any form of sadness. And um, I feel a whole lot of gratitude to God because the process of delivery is one that um, a lot of women go through and don't come back from. So um, when a woman goes into labor and comes out of the theater or the labor room with a baby, it's a thing of joy. And I'm very happy today. I have my prince with me. He's amazing. He cries a lot though. See me, see me, I'm coming. See me um, rejoicing that he's not going to cry so much. He cries a lot, but then we have him. So if you've watched the video to this point, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for staying with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give a comment the comment section below. And I will be replying. So when this I come away again, I mean just follow me. Bye.